Return of the Mount Hua Sect Chapter 160 Now let's go catch those Wudang bastards. Tuck, tuck. The two people came face to face with each other as soon as they finished climbing to the end of the cliff. Soon, Chong Myung's eyes widened. There! He saw a place where swords were inserted. There were some spears and axes too, but it was mostly swords. It probably meant that. This is the sword tomb. It was the moment when all the doubts which had built up in his mind and the thoughts that made him anxious were dispelled. Then that, Cho Myung quickly looked closer. It has to be. It's not just those things. He had no interest in these treasures. He simply didn't care. There was only one thing he wanted. Right. There was a big rock in the middle of the swords which were deeply pierced into the ground. On that rock, there was a small wooden box. There was no need to put a wooden box in between the inserted swords unless it held something, right? The soul vitality pill. It was unknown if the box really contained it or if it was some normal pill. Yet, he still wanted what was in the box. The moment Chong Min was about to move, he heard a heavy voice. Are you Mount Hua's divine dragon? Chong Myung slightly tilted his head. He moved his gaze from the wooden box and looked at Ho Sanja, who was glaring at him with a sword drawn. Oh? Killing intent. Chong Myung shook his head and said, And what if I am? You two have come all the way here. Why did you create such a situation? I have no idea what you're talking about. Ho Sanja's face contorted. If only Chong Myung hadn't robbed Mujin and given the map to everyone in Nanyang, such a situation wouldn't have happened and they wouldn't have suffered so much. In such a scenario, Mount Hua would have never even had a chance. But he did everything he shouldn't and such a situation happened. Should he be called smart or wicked? I acknowledge your abilities, but that is all. Go back quietly. I don't have patience anymore. You are but just a third-class disciple. If you try to fight against me, you will be beheaded. Ugh, I'm so scared. Chong Myung trembled sarcastically. But don't you find it strange saying such things? Hmm? A smile formed on Chong Myung's lips. You're already giving out this killing intent, right? Weren't you going to jump on me right away? Or were you trying to play at something else? Ho Sanja didn't answer. Maybe it was because he knew that Chung Myung's words weren't entirely wrong. Am I really considering that young one as a threat? In terms of strength and power, he was no threat. No matter how smart a child was, compared to the descendants of the Juga family or those professionally trained in warfare, this child would be nothing. But seeing Chung Myung up close, he changed his mind. Let's admit it. This guy is dangerous. The Jin disciples and the other Wudang disciples wouldn't fall behind too much, but they would have a tough time with this one. And their basics and teachings were different as well. If this boy was allowed to grow like this, Mount Hua may one day eat up Wudang whole. At that moment, Ho Sanja felt the same emotions that the elder of the Zhongnam sect felt in the past. No, this time, the emotions Ho Sanja felt were more intense and it was giving out a much bigger premonition of crisis than what Sama Sung felt at that time. Walk away, Ho Sanja said sternly. You said it. I am not following the path of Dao right now. You have shaken me out of it. You troubled me enough that I decided to put that aside because of all the stress which has built up inside me. Oh? Chung Myung kept looking at him. What if the positions were changed? Well... I would rather not have the positions changed since there is no one stronger than me. The best option was indeed to kill Chong Myung, since in the midst of everything that was happening here, no one could be held responsible if anyone died. Maybe if things went south in front of people, they would be criticized. But here, with no one around, no one was scared. But Ho Sanja kept telling Chong Myung to back away. Even if Chong Myung might turn into a threat to Wudang in the future, he wasn't going to kill a young disciple here. Hmm, is it because Wudang is Wudang? Coming all the way here, he would have seen a lot of things he couldn't see outside, but he was still sticking to his sect's principles. The old elder was proudly showing the reason why the name of Wudang was held sacred in the world. 
One. I am not going to back down. Cho Myung took a step ahead, and then a storm-like momentum erupted from the body of Ho Sanja, refusing my offer. Ah, oh, please. Your body looks like you're itching for a fight. Enough talking, and let's just start the fight. You. Ho Sanja clenched his teeth. When had he ever heard a young man say such things to him? I gave him enough chances. He should feel at ease. He tried to suppress his desire to behead the man and tried to let him go. But the child... He showed no signs of understanding it. Tuh! Ho Sanja rushed in as if no more words were needed. Chung Myung also rushed at him. Two people at the same time flew over the densely pierced weapons. Chuck! As if a blue line of silk was created in the air. A very clear sword key was directed at Chung Myung. It was similar to Mujin's, but also different at the same time. And Chung Myung knew that he couldn't fight the same way he had until now. The opponent was an elder of the Wudang sect. His current opponent was probably the strongest person Chung Myung had faced since his reincarnation. Chung Myung clenched a hand which held his sword. And as he rushed ahead, he kicked the handle of the swords that had been stabbed into the ground. And Ho Sanja's sword key passed right by him and cut through the hem of his clothes and almost touched his chest. He's no joke. This sword key was something that he could have deflected with just his hand in the past, but for his current self, it was threatening enough to claim his life. If it had hit properly, I would have gone down. Since the Wudang sect people were known to use a softer style, all things that actually hit the opponent's body were known to be strong. But now, just because a person makes porridge by gently beating it, could it be considered soft? That wasn't true. Whatever their method of using the sword was, the sword that was currently aiming at him didn't have the intent to subdue him. Rather, it wanted to kill him. If not, would the person whose sect has so much history do such a thing? Let's do it! A fire blazed in Chung Myung's eyes. Sword key as thin as silk began to come at him one after another without interruption and flew towards Chung Myung. Hut! With a brief exclamation, Chung Myung held onto the handle of his sword a bit behind him and then dashed ahead by kicking the sword key. What? Ho Sanja was startled when he saw it. He kicked the sword key? It wasn't about hitting it and moving, but constantly running ahead by jumping onto it. It wasn't like there was a wooden plank for him to do that in the air. So what was that? Amazing execution. It was to a point where he wouldn't even dream of trying something like that with his own limbs. That meant one thing. He didn't know if the depth of his comprehension and the operation of his key was different. But Mount Hua's divine dragon was undoubtedly superior to Ho Sanja. He didn't know how that was possible but he couldn't deny it after seeing it with his eyes. As Ho Sanja was unable to get over the shock of the sight he had just witnessed, Chong Myung approached him. You! Ho Sanja moved ahead and rushed forward. He slammed his sword into Chong Myung, who was rushing towards him. Kwang! There was a bursting sound. The swords that were embedded in the floor trembled. <coughs> Chong Myung coughed a little blood. He had definitely blocked and even defended himself from Ho Sanja's attack. Nevertheless, the sword of Ho Sanja shook his insides. That bastard! He was so good. The sword of Wudang was amazing. It was a sword that subdued its opponents with softness. However, as soon as Ho Sanja understood how Chong Meng operated, he immediately abandoned his own technique and adapted. He thought that no matter how creepy Chong Meng was when it came to adjusting, Ho Sanja had the experience to counter it. And his thoughts were right. It was unreasonable for anyone to counter an elder who had suffered and trained for decades. And this man, this elder, seemed like someone who learned from countless life or death experiences. Ho Sanja's eyes fluttered as he looked at the sword. You stopped it. A third class disciple. It wasn't a first class disciple or second class, but a third class disciple who had just turned 20. And that too, the sword key from an elder of the Wudang sect. I guess you didn't beat Mujin with luck. You. Just how were you able to block it? Well, we aren't close enough to have those conversations, you know? If that was the case, 
that we should just let our swords talk. <laughs> he had no conscience. Seriously. Ho Sanja spoke then. Listen. Cheng Myung, who was about to mumble something, went silent. This is a taboo in the Taoist sect. But if you are willing, I want to take you in as a disciple of Wudang, regardless of the cost. And if you wish, I can make you a second-class disciple. Huh? If you have this much talent, then relearning martial arts wouldn't be a problem. And in Wudang, you would have a better time learning things and get more experiences as well. So, Chong Myung smiled. No, maybe it might sound a bit enticing to others since the Wudang sect was asking him to abandon Mount Hua and come to him whatever the cost. They even said they would raise his disciple rank as well. But this was Chong Myung. No, old man, you have to be out of your mind. You are doing business with other sect's disciples. Then, Ho Sanja bit his lip and said, I will accept you as my disciple. Then you can become the first class disciple of Wudang. Enough. Chong Meng responded with a smirk. Nevertheless, Ho Sanja didn't give up. It is commendable that you have such deep affection to the sect you belong to. But if you are a warrior, you need to seize opportunities. And Wudang is better than Mount Hua. Ah, uh, enough. Why? Why do you not understand what is beneficial to you? Ugh, seriously, you're so tenacious. Wudang can give you more than Mount Hua. Huh, you don't seem to understand. Chong Myung smiled. I have no intention of being a disciple of someone who is weaker than me. What? And? Chong Myung deflected the sword that came at him with a little force, and then he moved back and forth and jumped off the cliff. <laughs> With his powerful feet, he soared high once again, and then he kicked the ground at once, making all the swords on the cliff fly high, and moved them towards Ho Sanja. What about Wudang? Chong Meng raised his key as much as he could. I, he kicked the swords again, will make Mount Hua. The weapons all went towards Ho Sanja like arrows. The best in the world! In this life, he would make it happen for sure.